Ride with me in my foul life. The Foul Life Podcast is back at you. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Meat. Meet your maker. Made with meat. M-E-A-T. Processing. Made easy. Butchering made easy. Saws. Grinders. Mixers. Vacuum sealers. Different size motors on your grinders, depending on what you're getting into. You've heard us talk about meat here before. Get into it. Get online. They're always having great introductory sales. Put together your entire arsenal, even down to their bags, the focus on detail, enough label space so you can put the location, the kill date, the species, everything you need to know that when you go into your freezer a couple months, a couple weeks down the road, that you know exactly what you're putting your hands on and pulling out for dinner that night tons of tutorials tons of instruction we're so proud to be partnered up with meat made with meat meet your maker check them out on facebook instagram go to their website go to their youtube find them on new episodes of the foul life tv we got a brand new episode coming out right now with our boys the particelli family down in california they own napa valley olive oil and we are processing and butchering and cooking speckle belly geese with them. We have another new episode with Remy Warren and David Wise where we do an entire segment with our meat products and showing you how we took snow geese and turned them into chorizo and Italian sausages and breakfast sausages, all different flavors, all different seasonings, and how we make street tacos right off of the grinder. It's an amazing episode. Thank you, Remy. Thank you, David. Thank you, Clay. Thank you, Tyson. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, everybody, for helping us put together an unbelievable season 13 of Benelli Presents The Foul Life. And I'm so excited today to talk about another partner, Rigid Industries, Light Up the World. Everything's so much better, so much clearer, so much prettier when it's lit up. We don't drive in the dark. I don't like setting up decoys in the dark. I don't even like going to my closet and filling around for a pair of shoes in the dark. What if you go into your silverware drawer? Nope, that ain't a fork. That's a spoon. But what if it's the other way around? That ain't a spoon and now you just pricked yourself with a fork or the tip of a really sharp knife. Think about it. Everything's better in the light. See the light. Own the night. That's what Rigid Industries does. All of our four-wheelers, our boats, our UTVs, our trucks, our trailers, they're equipped with Rigid Industries, LED light bars, fog lights, reverse lights. All of our bodyguard bumpers have Rigid Industry lights in them. We truly believe that's why all of the Baja racers use them. That's why all of the -the top-of-the-line off-road racers use Rigid Industries because they're racing at night when the sun goes down. I was going to mix in a little Kenny Chesney and Uncle Cracker there. When the sun goes down. But you kind of sang it like that other song. When the sun goes down, yeah. you'll be grooving. That's, that's Kenny Chesney. You, you started to do it. When the sun goes down, down on my side, side of town. town. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh, that's a little B and D. Do you have a rigid uh, light bar in your closet? Is that what you were implying? <laughs> on the ceiling, four right. of them. <laughs> you don't four different pl- switches, and they have strobe effect if I want to dance. You don't want to put two different colors on. You want to go dance? Maybe. You put on a little freaking Michael Jackson, the way you make me feel, the way you make me feel. You really turn me on. But think about it. These guys are racing in the dark. Crosby, when the sun goes down, they have to see every rock, every crack in the earth. They don't want to wreck. So I, I'm just telling you, just get into Rigid. I know that there's a lot of aftermarket lights out there, but nothing, and I mean nothing, compares to Rigid Industries. I promise you that from the bottom of my heart. In today's episode, finally, but not you know, they're last mentioned, but they're not the least. They are unbelievable. Made in America, the state of Wisconsin. We're going to be with them in the next couple of weeks. Thorough good footwear, thorough good boots, knee boots, rubber boots, neoprene boots, insulated boots, non-insulated boots, 800 grams of Thinsulate, 1,600 grams of Thinsulate, all the badass steel toe work boots, hiking boots, you name it, whatever industry you in, thorough good boots, T-H-O-R-O-G-O-O-D. That's a lot of O's, and they make my feet go, oh. Oh, Lordy, does this feel good? <laughs> that should be your new line right there. Throw good boots. <laughs> trademark but, that. But I'm telling you, they should trademark that. Register it right now. 
Thorogood, thank you so much for believing in everything the American hunter and gatherer and fisher and provider and conservationist stands for. I'm telling y'all, men, women, get Thorogood on your feet. Made in America, American factories. We're going to get to tour the factory, Crosby. We're going to get to watch a pair of boots being made. I'm going to get to stamp leather. Manual labor, bub, with a hammer. Which brings us to our last sponsor I lied. Today's episode of the Foul Life podcast is also brought to you by our friends and family at Crescent Tools. Crescent, that's like a name that's synonymous with tools. Like, give me that Crescent Ranch. Well, that's really not a Crescent Ranch. There's a lot of companies that make that same style wrench. But that's what we de- describe it as. It's an adjustable a wrench. Yes. But it's, but it's just become, like a Kleenex. Yeah. Yeah. It's because it's not a tissue. It's a Kleenex, right? right? It's very it, cool when that happens. It's so awesome. Crescent Family Tools, they make everything. Bubba was just telling me out here, we're getting the trailer ready and he had to measure a spot. He He's measuring parts of this trailer for these panel blinds. If they're We have to figure out where to put these bolts in the wall to put down our tie downs and everything. And he goes, this is the absolute best tape measure I've ever used. And he's like, look at this. You know, Bubba, he gets all, look at this. And he's like he's fist pumping out. me and pumping his shoulder. And like he's, the guy's <laughs> nuts. But that's what Crescent stands Measuring for. Measuring everything. They just don't cut corners. Every tool that they make, every wrench that they've sent us, open-in wrenches, closed-in wrenches, socket sets, you name it. If it has the word Crescent on it, you know that pride was taking in developing that tool line. So thank you, Crescent Tools for believing in the foul life and banded brands and this life ain't for everybody and the provider and American almond beef. We are doing all of our work. We're building blinds and fixing motors and putting light bars and bumpers on trucks. We're doing truck builds. We're doing everything with Crescent tools. They believe in the American hunter and that's why we believe in them. Thank you so much Crescent for showing us what it means to be top notch, top shelf, no cutting corners, get some Crescent tools in your tool bag. They even make a badass tool bag soon to be badass tool boxes thank you again to all of our partners and sponsors that support all of our brands here today's episode we're going to talk about something that is very near and dear to my heart this episode is being recorded on november 9th 2021 the official publication launch date of this crosby's looking at his own copy i know y'all can't see me right now but i'm holding up the provider cookbook fishing game recipes for eating wild and living off the land chad belding chad mendez but i want to say something about those names it shouldn't just be our names on there. That's who we, you know, he's, I, I went to Chad with this idea of the provider, but my brother Clay, my brother Clint, Alex across the table, Tom Rashashin, Jennifer Swenson, Heather, Nicole, my daughter Alyssa, and Chase, and Jimmy Ray, and Billy Bogey, and Chris, Kirk, Christy Crabtree, Aunt the, Andy Perwin. I want to keep going through here. Leith Lofton, Dan Henderson, Clay Guida. I want to keep going. Brandon Adams. Joel Wicker, George Thompson is in here. I don't want to cut corners. You don't want to forget anyone. You just can't, but there's so many people that helped us with it. Clay and Crystal Charlton, Grant Kuyper, Zach Brown's in here. Riley Green's in here. Look at the, just read the names on the back, Crosby, would you? Oh, I forgot to tell you. I know I'm talking a lot. Crosby's with us today. Alex, from This Life Ain't For Everybody and Breaking It Down series and Where the Payment Ends podcast. Alex, who are the endorsements by? My, my number one sticking right out there is George Brett. Read his, please. Uh, ready to eat like royalty. And that's a little play on words as the uh, Kansas, Kansas City, City Royals. Royals. You'll find so many new favorites in the provider cookbook. You'll wonder how you were preparing wild game and domestic meats without it. This is the rare book that truly feeds body, mind, and soul. Br- George Brett, MLB. That Hall is not of all it says. Keep going. Player. There's more. Black Bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeans, black bucks, <laughs> no, no socks. socks. <laughs> he, I, I, George I mean, Brett is on the back of our cookbook, dude. Look at that. And I see, you know, Clay Guida, who I used to love watching him in the uh, Ultimate I still Fighter. Love watching and him. I mean, he's a, he's an unbelievable. You know, he just went in the Hall of Fame with his fight against Sanchez, yeah. Diego. Dude, he he's he's an all. But when you see George, I Remy mean, Warren's on there. Better. I like Remy too. Uh, Riley Green. I don't know who Max. Uh, He's an actor. He's in uh, Navy Seal, the mo- the show on ABC or NBC. He's good friends with Mendez and Hendo, and great guy, Hunter Fisher, worker outer, nutritionist. Chad Ward, whiskey bent barbecues that's on a, there. That's a big endorsement. I mean, can you even? I mean, cooking is an art form, and Chad Belding and Chad Mendez understand. 
Can you? I'm reading this from Chad Ward. It's uh, they they understand that to their bones. Their passion shines through on every page of the provider cookbook. Thank you, Chad Ward. Chad Ward has maybe the best macaroni and cheese I've ever had. And I don't, did that make this book or no, is that for I episode couldn't use it two? Because, no, I couldn't put it in here because one, he's already given it, you know, it's Traeger's now, you know, yeah. he's mastered it, but it is like when he throws down on a Traeger dude, there's something about that man's touch. That sounded weird. There's something about the way that man cooks and grills. Is that what are you laughing book? at? Is, is that, that in the, the book, book here? <laughs> oh, it's one of those three D pop up uh, books. Weird. <laughs> wow. But Traeger, thank you, Traeger. Benelli's in here. There's Axel right there. Gator Coolers is in here. Napa Valley Olive Oil. HG Wines. Tony Chasseries. Ooh, there's the Chapino by Jim Ray. Jim Ray started crying the other day when he saw his name in here. A bunch of times. He's in here a bunch of times. That's Fitness a bad. Tips. That's a this chucker photo with that Benelli uh, over under is really nice. Look at the oyster beds in here, Louisiana oyster bed. It's about the culture of what a provider is. And when you look in here and you see us, we're just normal dudes, right? It's just the the passion that you want to put into like Tom Rashashin's photography in this book, bro. Are you looking at how beautiful these food pictures and layouts are? Like, you would look at Tom, right? When he walks in the room, you look at Tom. He looks like, what's his name in Seinfeld? Kramer, right? Comes in there, sliding in, hair Hair's messed all, up, yeah. T-shirt. But he lays down the absolute best photography I've ever seen. He definitely has some kind of an eye for this. stuff, And I was fortunate enough to see a lot of this go down. And, and you know, you see him stick that lens one inch away from these wild turkey bacon skewers, and you think, big deal. But then you see it here, and, like, I don't know if that's some – maple syrup or but it's just unbelievable the detail he got i love the uh i love the feel of this book too it's kind of the, it's, it's almost like a review because i've seen the book but i've never really put my hands all over it like this but like when nice. like it, it would be honest oh, i'm looking at leith lofton's family's mississippi tomato gravy leith lofton's in here brent cobb family recipes are in here shelly Right from Honey Break, her squirrel recipes in here. But that's, that's a little to, weird for us on the West Coast. Oh, it's so good. The Jack Daniels. I forgot Jack Daniels. Look at all these cocktails in here. We made these up on the spot. The Macon. We named that after Jamie Johnson's Macon song. Has a little. Peach Let's get in back it. to Macon. Get back Is that a to town? Macon. Yeah, it's a dump now. They need to clean that place up. It used to be beautiful. Mm. We have the Country Club. That's named after a Travis Tritt song. I'm, I'm a, a member of, of a country, country club. club. Country music is what I love. I just found the, uh, I don't mean to throw you off track, but I'm going to go with probably your number one. Hold on, just let me finish this cocktail. The last one is a duck hunting term, the honey hole. We made up these Jack Daniels cocktails with the help of our boy E.T. Check out E.T., part of the Jack Daniels bartender bartending family. But you're going to see some Jack Daniels cocktails in the provider cook. But go ahead. My favorite what? Right here. Pulled goose sandwich. I'm going to say is <coughs> if second to only people requesting your goo, uh, duck fried rice recipe, wouldn't you agree that I this I put the duck fried goose- rice in the December issue of... California Waterfowl Magazine, and it turned out unbelievable. Um, but d don't glaze over that. Don't you think more people ask about that recipe right there than any other? And partially because a lot of people don't know how to cook geese, but also they're good. Um, now I'm not. I don't lie. That the people go, well, who, where'd you, where'd you make? How'd you make up all these recipes? I didn't. I don't know if anybody makes up a recipe. Nobody does. I think there's always like a, a basis, right? Like somebody's like, well, I'm gonna make biscuits and gravy, but I'm gonna try something different. Tomato gravy has been done in the South forever. The sure. Lofton family just has a special version of it. But Joe Robinson, he's a waterfowl biologist in the state of Michigan. He, um, he, we're hunting in Ontario, Canada, and we sma we're smashing geese every day. And I talk about this all the time on the podcast of like when you go to a camp like that, whether Canada or down here in the continent of the United States, there's a such thing as a possession limit. So you go out and you, and the, usually the possession limit in most states now is three times the daily limit. So in Canada, you're killing, you go on a five day trip and you kill your eight geese a day. You can have eight times three is 24, right? You can have 24 geese. But what happens on the fourth day when you still have your 24 geese in the freezer? 
and you smash them again. What are, what like I all I hate that rule because I don't want people to dictate when I can eat my geese. We've talked about that. What if we want to have a big major game feed at the end of the year? Well, they do it to stop market hunting and killing all these geese and ducks and selling it. That's when it was possession limits and daily limits were brought into effect. Um, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to be a know-it-all about the laws and, re and regulations of waterfowl hunting. Both federal and state agencies have different ones, and that's a gray area, too, in waterfowl hunting. But you got to get rid of the birds. You can't just dispose of the meat. That's called wanton waste. You eat the freaking meat. Like in coyote hunting, there's no wanton waste. You can leave them lie. But if you have your fur bear, if you take one, you have to have your fur bear's license to right. skin out a coyote. So there's different laws that apply to predator management and predator hunting as well. So um, this guy, Joe Robinson, dude, I'm watching these geese. And I'm like, dude, we got to eat some geese. All right. He goes, watch this. And he goes and gets this recipe going, Crosby. And I, and I had never done it. I had never done it. And I had done pulled pork before, you know, you get your pork all dry rubbed out and you put it on your grill and you smoke it out for low temps for long period of times. You're talking 20 years ago or something. Well, but. not 20 years ago. I would say this was, well, I'm not going to, it's, let's, let's not lie about this. This is 2008, 2009, 2009 or 10. It's season two or three of the foul life. I'm up there filming in Ontario, not for the foul life. I'm up there filming for 24 seven video series with Freddie Zink. And I'd already had this trip planned. We use some of it. If you go back to season two, two or three of the foul life, you'll see some of this footage of us, me and Freddie in Ontario. I used some of the clips um, of that trip to Ontario. It was badass. Um, um, but he starts putting this recipe together. He's got the apple cider, real apple cider, high acidic value. And, he, and he's, he's using a crock pot at the time. I've learned to do it different now because I love cooking outside and doing the Traeger so much that I use foil tins and a real tight foil wrapping on the top of it and slow cook it really, you know, for long. This is a seven, eight hour recipe. Yeah, but you can cook a lot of geese at one That's time. That's the point. Mm -hmm. Now you cut the breasts out and the legs out and cut all the leg meat off and you slow cook it and it becomes like a pulled pork recipe. You can pull it apart with your fingers or two forks, add in your barbecue sauce, maybe a little bit more s provider rub, some pickles, some cheese, an onion bun. Dude, I I've watched grown men take down seven, eight of these sandwiches in one oh, yeah. sitting. And you can, I imagine it, it keeps well too, right? So you cook it all and... If you eat half of it and throw the rest in the freezer and you can eat it freeze back it, up. or you can the next morning, or dude, the next day, the next yeah. morning you make omelets with it. Boy, mm -hmm. I'm talking like you ever had a chili omelet or like a carnita omelet. It yeah. sounds like just yeah. like that. It's like a carnita omelet. It's stringy. Yeah. Looks like you got pork carnitas on there. You mix in some refried beans, like a huevo rancheros recipe, <laughs> and like it's like freaking amazing. So these recipes that we've been cooking for years. Dave Stanley's in here. John David Stanley's in here. People that have given us these ideas for years, Jim Ray's Caesar salad, and it's in here, Cobb's collards, his collard green recipe that his grandma made up, Aunt Diane Belding, Uncle Bill and Aunt Diane and Cousin Christy and Cousin Mandy, her macaroni salad is in here. Are that, go, go to that. That's page, uh, go ahead and go to page um, 238. How many pages is this book? 264, 80 recipes. That's nice. I think we're going to get into it, but it's much more than recipes. What are we looking at? 238? Yeah. Did I tell you? I was my, stopping my phone like I'm a rookie. Well, 238 is a uh, cocktail. Um, did I tell you the wrong page? I Sorry, my phone was ringing. Did. Sorry, 228. Oh, yeah. Look at that picture of Clay and his dickies getting the eggs that we use for that macaroni salad. Diana's macaroni salad. It is so good, too. I had obviously had it many times, but that's a good... I'm pumped that that's in there. Ranch mashers on the page before. If you go a couple pages before Aunt Diane's, you see the, the provider garden that Clay takes a ton of pride in. Look at the takes of those vegetables. Look at the photography. Look at that. That one almost looks photoshopped. This is called sides and sauces. We've already jumped ahead to the end of the book. I know. This but is... look at that picture that introduces sides and sauces. That's a Canadian canola field. Look at that. That just makes me want to go. You When you call coyotes in Canada, you get on one edge and call them out of that tree line on the other side, and they come bum rushing across that field. Do you? Was this a goose hunt or duck hunt? That yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of hunting canola, usually hunting the peas, but... Um, but it's just beautiful landscape. And Tom, oh, look at chicken and smoked sausage jambalaya Oof. with Tony Chasseries and Whisker Bomb hot sauce. 
Dan Henderson's white chicken chili. Honey chipotle wings. I'm going the wrong way of you, but... Chicken curry tacos. Here's an archery elk hunt story written by Chad Mendez. There's a lot of cool insight in here where we get influence, inspiration. There's fitness tips. There's tips on duck calling in here. There's there's butchering tips. There's processing tips. I'm not... I, it's... It's easy to say, well, we're just trying to sell a cookbook. This cookbook took so much work. And to have a national publishing deal, like, talk to me, Crosby, like, what you're thinking. Honey, soy, marinated flank steak. See, there's a domestic part. You know, you don't always have wild game. Sometimes you're going to have caprese grilled chicken. Look how beautiful that shot is by Tom. Easy, simple recipes. We put every recipe together. This Chapino picture is amazing. That's Jim Ray's Chapino. Candied pork chops. Look at this ribeye shot right here. Bone-in ribeye, tomahawk oh, yeah. style on the Traeger. Beautiful. Unbelievable. Like, I can't put it down. I have so much pride in the book. It's, it's, uh... This is almost, uh... Too nice isn't the right vernacular to use, but... This is almost just like a, a regular hardback like novel that you would read. You know what I mean? It's, what do you mean? It's not like the old red and white checkered Betty Crocker cookbook that everybody's house has in it. You know what I mean? You, you don't get the... And there's some really cool custom cookbooks out there. There's some... I'll show you some. Like Tuffy Stone just sent me his, and it's beautiful. It's a bar, more of a barbecue one. And then there's like the Southern style cookbook. There's beautiful cookbooks out there. And this is our first go around with one. Brad's Killer Striper Chowder. I just Brad Forsyth. It's an amazing recipe. Do you think any of these other cookbooks have a shot of these three Benelli's up shooting those three geese? No. Over the water. That's the difference in ours, right. I think. Steven Rinella does a great job with his cookbooks for Meat Eater. Have you ever used any of those? No. Have you ever looked at one? No. Are you serious? Uh, never. I don't even know he had them. The picture of this goose landing is unbelievable. You might have to get two of these books, put one in the living room, one in the kitchen. You can definitely tell a lot of time went into the... That's Zach Brown in the back picture of that. You like that? Look at that picture. Wow. Playing around the campfire in Arkansas. That's what outdoor living's all about. We cooked together that night on that fire pit. We put a grate over it and did we did deer and duck, Zach Brown and I, with Mr. Billy Bogey. To the right of him is Matt Mangiano, his bass player. Brandon Adams, Brian Adams, Todd Ross, Christian Curtis, Brad Arrington, Clay Belding. Look at how awesome that freaking environment is. That honey hole sounds like a delicious drink. I feel like we're all over the place, but as I run into things, like you see this, it makes me want to try Do you want to go have one after this podcast? I do. Do you have 10 fresh mint leaves? Yes. And basil. What about this Cajun fried catfish sandwich? I'm not into catfish. Really? You've been catfished twice, you told me. <laughs> I've catfished a few people, too. No, I, uh, I only had it once, and it wasn't good. Maybe I didn't have it prepared correctly. You like catfish? Um, yeah, if I cook it, if it's done right. Does that sound bad to say? No, I think that sounds good to say. Cobb's collards. I like collard greens with the bacon in them. I think a lot of people might... Not, but I think they're delicious. This is this book came out really good. Um, I'm sitting here looking at. I want you to look at this one right here. It's called the Perrain Shrimp and Grits with Pepper Jack Cream Sauce. Look at this. These are these oyster beds. I don't know if you're much of an oyster guy, but here's what I've done on these oyster beds. Everybody, pay attention out there. Oysterbed.com. They give proceeds back to oceanography and ocean research to help, you know, to help keep oysters alive because of the way our ocean's going. They have a hard time surviving. So they're putting a lot of research and science into that. They put a lot of financing into that. They're both veterans of our military. They come up with this idea of all these different shapes of this oyster bed. You can get it real hot and line it with some sauce and butter. They have this butter sauce called Perrain's and you can do quail in there you can do chucker breasts in there you can do scallops in there you can do frog legs in there i've done alligator cubes in there oysters in there sardines uh, you can do clams and we have probably three or four five recipes in this cookbook that incorporate 
the oyster bed. So I'm talking like if you don't have one of those, you could take little strips of tuna and get that oyster bed so hot. Obviously, a lot of safety and care is in this, but you can sear tuna in a heartbeat. These crab cakes that are in this one. Don't they look awesome? Um, that's the, that's and it's the, a yeah. simple ass crab cake recipe. Simple. That yellowtail with mango sauce right before that. I, I hope we're making people hungry, but I wanted, I wanted to get your opinion of just going through it and how badass it is. It is really cool. It's hard to put down, huh? Yeah. I, I think that's what <laughs> a lot of that visualization, you know, of this photography that's not just food. Like in one page difference, you go from uh, JD's poppers. Which is beautiful. To a dog handing a duck hunter his prize from out of the water. And I just I don't think that you see that in every other cookbook. I haven't seen a lot of them. Here's you shooting a shotgun. Did you miss or make this shot, do you recall? It looks like some kind of spring hunt, very green. I'm, I think you probably hit that, huh? I seen you shoot clay pigeons. Me? What what's the uh, hardly miss? What is the uh um uh, Thai basil elk elk. Dude. I saw the video of that. And honestly, not a lot of things make you want me want to cook something. That made me want to cook that. And it's easy. It, dude, it's so quick, fast and simple. You know what Thai basil is and the difference between that and regular garden basil, the spiciness to it? Like no. when you eat Vietnamese food or pho yeah. and you taste the Thai basil, it's got a little bit more kick to it. It's a different flavor. But that Thai basil elk recipe, you can do it with rabbit. You can do it with antelope. You can do it with deer. You can do it with duck. That's what's so cool about these recipes. You read it. It should say it should say something like axis deer meatball soup. It should say whitetail, mule deer, axis deer, antelope, beef, elk, right? sheep, whatever. moose, beef, whatever you want to put mm -hmm. in there. It's just about how you take care of that wild game from the field to the freezer, right? Or field to fork. Um, but yeah, that Thai basil elk, it goes together in a heartbeat. Um, easy as heck. Not very many ingredients and just step by step and you're done with it. I think that the problem with cooking wild game and even domestic meats is the intimidation factor of being unorthodox or thinking outside the box. Yeah, I'm looking at duck egg rolls right now, and, and it seems a little bit intimidating. I imagine if you made it once or twice, it would be just like, you know, making a PB&J. But those look amazing. But it does seem, you know, like when you look at that Thai basil chili, you know, less ingredients, few less steps. And then you look at that, it would be, you know, easy to become intimidated. But I think if you did it once or twice... You could do it by memory. And um, they lights out. Wow. Which one? These duck egg rolls. Do you know whose recipe that is? I know. Christy Crabtree. I had them at her house. Uh, you were there cooking with us that yeah. day. And those goose lettuce wraps. Oh, my God. All that food was but good But that's that the day. thing is that I want to pay homage to girls like Chris, Chris, Christy Crabtree. I just did a podcast with Kirsty Ennis. So every time I've said Crabtree today, I've been wanting to call her Kirsty, But Christy Crabtree. You did a podcast with Kirsty Alley from uh, no, Full Kirstie House? No, Kirsty Ennis. No, oh. Kirsty Alley from Cheers. Cheers, that's right. <laughs> Kirsty Alley from Full House. <laughs> Wasn't she on Full House too? No. John Stamos and Bob Saget were. <laughs> oh, what about the guy that did Cut It Out? Oh, Greg. Greg uh, no, John. Uh, no, John Stamos is the drummer for the Beach Boys. He was Uncle Jesse. God, how do I know this? You know why? Because my daughter's 10 and she watches Fuller House now. And she's like, Daddy, they're coming out with a new season. And freaking Stamos is still on it. Is he really? Yeah, he's one of the best looking guys ever born. I was going to say, he, he, he's sick. probably retained his looks. Elk I, Euros. There's Euros in here. Easy Greek cucumber food, you know? Remember how many Euros we ate in Pittsburgh at the NRA show? Oh, I love Every Pittsburgh. day we Remember went there Remember our plane those? flight out there and then our oh. drive to that sandwich place? What was the name of that sandwich place? Something Brothers. Famous. The, uh, the uh, Pickney Brothers? Pick P it starts with a P. Pit, uh, we got to give them a plug. There's like five of them there all around that area, that are, and they're just unbelievably the, the, popular, dude. It's kind of like getting the awful awful in Reno, but better. Right. The Fry Basket and... Is it Pitts? Hold on. Famous. Let's just put in Famous... Sandwiches, Pittsburgh, and see if it comes up. <laughs> First one, Promonte Brothers. That's it. Restaurant and restaurant and bar strip district. Oh man, that place was rad. Free ride from the airport. She's like, you guys got to try this place. 
That's called taking one for the team, Crosby. Good job, buddy. That's right. Um, I'm looking at the the uh, this venison ragu. I want to make sure that everybody understands what we're saying is that think outside the box. You don't have to follow every step. Make up your own recipes once in a while. It was hard. It was hard to write down all these recipes for me, the ones that I cook a lot because you're like, oh, shit, yeah, I got to put that in there. And when I cook, you've seen me cook. It's just like a pinch of this. I don't measure anything. Right. I don't even follow the same recipe once. Like when you say make your duck fried rice, it might be different on Wednesday than it was on Sunday. I might say, well, I'm going to throw in water chestnuts this time, or I'm going to put more eggs in this time, or I'm going to do this a little bit different. You know, there's little secrets. Like what's the secret of the best fried rice? It's the temperature of the rice. You have to get your rice to the right consistency, like when you cook your white rice. But then you have to literally let it cool down 100% to where it's all separated and it doesn't have that whole stickiness to it. Like people rush it too much. They go straight from the heat to the wok and that's not, you can't, you don't fry rice like that. It just becomes a glob. So you have to like separate it and get, let it cool off and almost get to where it's separating itself again, like, you know, hardening up again. Mm -hmm. And then you fry it to once it's cooled so down. So you don't get that mushy yeah. rice, huh? That's the biggest problem with fried rice is that you don't, that nobody lets it get to the right temperature before they fry it. But you can't fry raw rice because that ain't going to cook it through. You have to steam it, raw rice. Say that four times. No. <laughs> that's kind of like fra that's kind of like a fra raw 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 raw. Exactly. Whatever. That's exactly <laughs> what I thought of. <laughs> that's coming up on that time of season. Um, so there's a lot of secrets in this book that I think that just normal guys like ourselves and Clay and Clint and you, and like I mentioned at the beginning of this, that we do every day. Look at this wild boar quiche. Again, any meat you want, but a quiche, you know what a quiche is? It's like an egg pie. It's right. awesome. It's delicious when done right and the crust is flaky and done right and, and done the right way. That's the trick, right? Yeah. My first chance at a bull by Clint Belding. You wrote an article in here, right? Which one did you write? A couple of them. Yeah. The Money Elk Burger. Well, that could be a beef burger, right? Oh, these stuffed bell peppers. We use ground elk in here, but I've made duck, I've made duck. Stuffed bell peppers for Dan Henderson and Leith Lofton in Canada two years ago. And Hendo flipped out. Like, literally was like, holy shit, these are so unreal. That's one of my favorite things, stuffed bell peppers. They're amazing. So the provider cookbook from cover to cover, babe. Did you ever read Moby Dick? <laughs> cover to cover, babe. <laughs> cover to cover. They got chili dogs over there? Is this because I didn't read Moby Dick? <laughs> hey, this is a great line for a cookbook. They got chili dogs over there? Never mind. All Never order. Mind. All order. That's one of the greatest movies of all time, Major League. Really Can you believe is. that that movie is almost 40 years old? Is it really? No, wait. It was made in 1989, I believe. How old does that make it? 99 to 2009 it's, uh, is 20. 31 years old. 31 years old already. That's That's insane. crazy. God, time flies. Venison piccata. You could do that with anything. This antelope backstrap, this thing right here, This have you, have you got to page... Um, 44 the roulade it's the cover photo that recipe right there is like a stuffed nerf football we do it with ducks can do it with antelope look at the picture right before oh, wow. that look at that picture right before it go back one look at that elk hunt picture of bubba and clay is i was on a mountain sick? way across that valley you watching. were yeah spotting they are they're not aiming at you are they i hope not he would what? miss anyway <laughs> that is a cool picture though that and that looks delicious so beautiful who came up with all these like set i don't know if set design is the right word but like who laid all that out um just all you guys kind of came together and hold on a second i'm gonna i'm gonna get tom in here and talk a little smack because he's gonna want to take credit that he laid them all out. You come in here and close that door real quick, would you? Oh, no. We we're no, it's not bad. Huh? No, he's gonna talk into mine. He can just sit right here. Is it is the guy Clay, here? Is that tell what? Clay to come in here? Hey, Clay can get on your microphone. Clay, come in here too on on Alex's microphone. So the, we're talking. Sounds about, like we're bringing in some uh, hired hands here. Yeah, it is, huh? Oh, you're standing up. So well, because he doesn't have a chair here. What so kind I'm... of sweater is that, dude? Is that You look ultra sophisticated today. Nautica, I believe. Nobody wears a Nautica sweater with that beard and that head. You need a freaking Sturgis jacket I'm going on. to 210 North after this. 
EJ the DJ is playing? I think he is. So we're talking about the cookbook, Tom and Clay, and the question has to freaking come up. Uh-oh. Who laid out all the food design on this? And my brain automatically went to me. Tom, specifically, I'm me. looking at this photo here. It doesn't That's have my to tray. be this, but this is nice. But Tom, you got to talk into this mic. That's my tray that it's on. I agree. I- yeah, I believe Chad did supply the table and the tray. Uh, but as far as the food design... Hmm. No, let's, let's Who's going to pay me the most let's not to tell talk, me? Let's not talk shit about it. Let's be honest. Th- there is something to be said because we are, we, are talking about, we are talking about the overall layout of the book and the role that the photography takes. Well, obviously, there was a lot of help that went into getting the shots. Jen for inner shopping, the organization, the kitchen. But you started laying this stuff out. And I would have an idea and I'd bring something out or Clay or Mendez would bring something out. And then we'd leave for a second. We come in you would totally change it. So Crosby's question was, is like you take pictures of moving skiers. You take pictures of an owl on a limb. You take pictures of Pyramid Lake and the clouds over it. You take badass photography outside. But we're like, th- this is a completely different kind of photography. Yeah. Were you ready for it, trained in it? Or were you kind of intimidated because none, no, no two pictures look the same in the food layout? Yeah, I, uh, it's funny you bring that up because uh, that is actually something that I I was super worried about taking pictures for this cookbook is that food photography is you know all about the lighting and, and all that stuff as a photographer, but really it's the presentation of the food and you know, it, it's as simple as like, well, if they put too much gravy on the plate, it kind of drowns out the, the food and you can't make out the meat. So there's little things like that that make a big difference in the presentation of the food. Uh, so those are little things that add up and that kind of as a photographer, you rely on the other team to kind of make sure that that food is in, in, a, in a format that's not going to, you know, look bad on camera. So I guess my thing is, is that, yes, the whole team kind of put in an A effort to kind of get that food looking a certain way. And, and yeah, Chad would kind of like design the food plate a different way. And maybe I might jump in and kind of add, you know, a, you know, a little added element to the picture. So it kind of evolved between all of us and Jen. Jen was a big part of it. And so was Mendez as far as getting that plate hey, to no, look that way. Did Clay do anything? Clay was there, yeah, for sure. No, Clay did. Uh, he had the artichoke uh, spinach dip. There. So <laughs> I ate. I ate most of the dishes after. <laughs> after the pictures were taken, we had to make sure. Did you do the dishes afterwards? No. But here's Definitely something did. that I noticed that I really like, and Clay, I want you to talk on this. Is that there is so much when you look at a picture, right? And I'm not. I'm not trying to sound like I have a trained eye in photography or art. But look at the food pictures, Crosby and Cl- look at the food pictures, Crosby and Clay on. I, I look on page uh, where are we at there sixty wild boar quiche. Look at what's in the picture. Yeah. So why are the raw eggs there? Because quiche is eggs, and then you have the different cheeses or the different things that accompany that dish. It's a breakfast dish, you know, historically. So there's some berries there, right? Like that's the kind of things that set these pictures off, in my opinion, is that you could easily just take a picture of that pie, that quiche, but it doesn't really get you in the mood to eat it or set the set the atmosphere or the personality of the experience of that food. And that's what that's what I think that really went into all of this food design. And now it makes me have a greater respect for those photographers that go in and do these magazine shoots and these cookbook shoots, because this is an like, I can't even tell you how many hours have gone into this book, but it's thousands, right? It's a lot of days of hours. It only takes 10 days to equal 240 hours. Well, we smashed that with just the photo shoots, not including the writing, the editing, the post-production, any, all the phone calls, the conference calls, any of that shit, right? But yeah. if you look at the, the a majority of the pictures, Clay, you see the ingredients or you see a duck decoy or a duck call. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, it gives you that f- feeling that, you want to eat it, right? And I, I remember going, you know, bringing out dishes with Tom and him him putting in like he's talking about those little additives, maybe a th- roasted thing of garlic or or some spices. And 
powder or, or <laughs> whatever it is, flour. And I remember, yeah. oh, we spilled too much and we took, oh, God, now we got to get a vacuum out and we vacuum it all up and we got to do it all over again. It's not like a one-time shot. So to get all those things right in, in, I guess Tom's view, once he gets back to the computer and goes through the, it's not like he takes one picture of that and calls it good, right? It's hundreds of pictures of each one and different styles. Okay. One time it's one with chilies around it and a spoon. The next time it's one with the garlic on it and it's a different spoon, maybe with an elk horn on this. What feel does that picture take on once you get it back to basically the editing room? What feel do you really want to tell of that story? And I think Tom is awesome at that saying that quiche might have a hundred different photos on it, but it didn't have all those ingredients. And that one felt right to him. And so in the end, Tom basically, even though we all helped, he's the one who kind of took it at the very end and said, okay, this one feels right in the end of what we're trying to portray to our customer. Yeah, I agree. And I think that go to page 94 and look at that photo. Now this is a non cooking photo and this is a prep, what I would call a prep photo of butchering mm -hmm. and processing, which is one of the coolest butchering photos I've ever seen. Why to me, what stands out is the completed cuts on the back strap above Clay's knife. And then as he goes in to make the slice right there, it shows you the intensity of living food, you know, filled the fork. You have your meat grinder, the meat company on the right, but the shot that Tom gets here, there's nothing heavy advertising in it. It just shows the intensity and the passion and pride that a butcher should take in making sure that this meat is taken care of the right way. Because this right here is arguably the best piece of protein in the world. This elk backstrap. I like that Clay's got the, you know, he's got some dried up blood on his hand. You, he actually was doing this work, you know, he, yeah. even though he could be a male model stand in, he was actually cutting that. <laughs> or I guess you could have photoshopped that in there, but no, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you don't, most people might not even know that that's Clay, but you, you see his hand very predominantly with the blood on it. I like it, Tom. Yeah. Thank you, Crosby. I, I think that's also another thing that you'll see throughout the cookbook is that they're not these like clean, pristine cooking photos. And I don't know if that hurts or helps us, but it really is. So we we're are. in the moment and that's what we do. And so like this clay cutting up the meat. I was there, on that. Unique. I remember that photo well. And all I could think about was how thick I was going to cut those steaks. <laughs> Am I going to go inch and a half? Am I going to go two? Meters, yeah, exactly. The one, that picture right there, stop. I'm glad you went to that. You keep going to these non-cooking photos. That one on the right, what page is that? 99, 98. 99. Oh, 98, I asked someone who was looking at the cookbook the other day. I said, okay, on those pages, how many dogs do you see? How many dogs do you see? Oh, wow. I didn't, I didn't notice till just now. Which, how many dogs do you see? 98, 99. How many dogs do you see, Crosby? I see two. Which we're one? We're talking both pages. Yeah, both pages. Yeah, two. They, but, I, yeah, that's crazy. You, you yeah. don't see that, but you do not. A These lot of people two. don't see those eyes no, in, yeah, in the yeah, corn yeah, stalks that's, that's on, on that's, page 99. That's so photoshopped in most people's opinion. And, but it's unbelievable. It's like Every time When I first saw that picture when you came back from North Dakota, Tom? Yeah. North Dakota, you got that picture. And to be able to get that intensity of that dog, and it, that dog is pure white, white like that. Oh. None of that is photoshopped as far as changing Isn't colors. Is there a picture of her petting him in here? That could it's, be a Bev Doolittle. It's well, unbelievable to see another, that, another the, the photos. But I, I, I also, how crazy is this that we're sitting here talking about this cookbook in a podcast? Brian McGee, president and co-founder of Gator Coolers, him and his brother Mitch started the company. He just texts me and sends me this. Hmm. 110 cookbooks he just ordered for his Christmas gifts from Gator Coolers. Wow. How cool is that? Awesome. Thank People you, are loving the book. We sent him one and he's like, dude, this freaking book is rad. Brad Forsyth just bought 21 cookbooks. He says 21 because he wants one signed. I should ask him who he wants Jim to Ray sign. Jim Ray just by. came by and gave us a check for 10 and took 10. Wow. So, I mean, it's it, here's the other thing, Tom. I know that you're a very humble person. Mm. Like, you really don't take credit ever. Um, <laughs> just a little bit. But how? be honest. Like, touching this, and have you sat down and really went through it at your house? Have you kicked oh, your yeah. hands up? I, I mean, I've shared it with my wife, Christy, and she's my biggest person that critiques me to where I feel like nothing. 
And, uh, Especially in skiing. Yeah. And, that and feels skiing. good at home, doesn't it, Tommy yeah. Boy? <laughs> I feel like I need to come home and be a I man or something. I hope she doesn't hear this because okay. I know she doesn't do yeah. that. But, but she, isn't it unbelievable how nice it is? Yeah. She, even even Christy has kind of said, you know what? This is this is great. We need to get this out to family and friends, you know, because it, it is a special book. Have you ever done anything so profound? Hmm. Ooh, that's a good question. Well, yeah, I mean, I know you've taken pictures. What's the definition of profound? Tom wants to know. I'm asking for a friend. You've taken pictures. Can I use a lifeline? You've taken pictures for magazines, and but have you ever had so many pictures? Basically, I mean, I know it's a cookbook, and you're going to use a lot of your photos, but basically, 98 percent of every picture in here is your work. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you guys said, it is a teamwork. Like I could not have done this by myself. There's no way. So I, I attribute, you know, even the hunting stuff, like there's a lot of stuff that goes into all these photos. Every photo has a story uh, and a lot of people behind it to make it happen. So what's the story um, behind this one? Because I've been told by two different individuals, one being Jim Ray, who Clay just mentioned, this is his favorite photo in the book. That's this a good one. This became a that's fast a, favorite of Arkansas, right? Yeah, that's a page. What page is that? 169. 169. 169. So that's at Prairie Wings uh, and... I, if you watch the foul life, you'll probably know a little bit about Prairie Wings, and uh, it's uh, it's an amazing duck hunting camp in Arkansas. And every night, pretty much, is there's something going on around the campfire, and that particular photo right there was, you know, another special night. Just good music around the campfire, and yeah, I, I mean, know. most most people have shared, even though they haven't been at that campfire, right? That picture brings feelings of That's their own uh, own campfire book. yeah and and the and fire has those deer on it you know, I mean, it's just kind of ducks a, on the other side and prairie wings and it yeah. became such a fast favorite of the owners of prairie wings that brandon adams had it you send him a full-blown print that's up on the wall in the that's, lodge now here's an, the the last photo of the book is the same fire pit zach brown and matt like these kind of nights that's what this cookbook was all we, was all about to me was the culmination of all of those times that you're at camp and go, man, I wish I knew what Billy Bogey put in his deer steak. Mm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. now when you go look at that page, I don't know where it is in here, but if you find Mr. Billy Bogey's deer steak, smothered deer steak, that picture that you took of that man, I'll show you the text from him. It says, you made my life. Mm. Right? Like he was so excited about yeah. that photo shoot. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he saw his picture in the middle of the, he's like the centerfold, right? Yeah. And, and that also kind of goes to say about his personality and who he is. It makes it special even more knowing this guy and how humble he is and little simple things like that mean a big deal to him. And, you know, in today's age, you know, photos and people's selfie pictures or whatever, it's just kind of you get sort of numb to it. But Billy, it was a big deal to him. And that was a big deal for me, too, to take it and to be, you know, part of his his life in that. So, yeah, and, that, and that's what I like about the uh, the book. Uh, uh, Another thing I like about it is that it's not just a cookbook, right? It's not just going to stay in the kitchen because there's stories in here of mm -hmm. where the meat comes from or how to butcher or how to garden, stuff like that, mm -hmm. to where it's going to be on the, you know, your coffee table reading the stories as well. Like you missed it, but I told Chad, it, it's almost like you have to get two of them. You, you want one in the kitchen yeah. for the recipes and one in the living room to yeah. read the stories and look at the pictures. Nobody wants to drag a book from one room to the other when you live and, in a house like mine. And, and in cookbooks, whether you want to admit it or not, they get dirty. So if you want to keep a good coffee table book, this is a coffee table book that it serves the purpose of the kitchen too. But if you want, you got to get two because the way I cook, this this thing's going to get marked up, which is fine too because you leave a mark on it. But there, I wanted to bring you guys in here because it's one of those things to where every night I like find myself wanting to pick it up. I want I find myself wanting to pick it up and read it and touch it. Like it's just got a culmin. It's just cool to be able to look at. That's why our good friend John LaMonica does those books of his hunting. It's not to brag. It's so he could look through it and go, and people can be like, wow, this guy's lived a freaking unbelievable life. This is, well, these guys have learned a lot of cool recipes through their travels. I don't take credit personally for one recipe in this book. I've never written a recipe. I just don't write recipes. Now I put my own zang or something on something that where you're like, oh, I'm going to like 
make a pasta or a goulash. My dad taught me goulashes at a young age. What's a goulash? Yeah, well, you take the leftovers from the last four dinners you've had and you do this with it, right? Yeah. Well, people, it's Brad Forsyth explains this perfect. His girlfriend, Danielle Smokey, he calls her the MacGyver chef because she can get in, at, get something out of everything. Remember MacGyver? He'd have like a freaking zip tie and a freaking toothpick and he would make a sword out of it, bow and arrow out of it, right? Well, he calls her the MacGyver chef. And that's how I want to be of like, we were born poor. We were brought up in a humble family of hardworking parents and leftovers were a a guarantee and leaving food to the garbage was not in the cards. So I try to teach Alyssa, we eat everything. If there's something left over, we're going to figure out a way to consume it in another meal. do you feel like your dad's spaghetti sandwich will make it onto the provider cookbook <laughs> second edition? Or meatloaf sandwich? Or, uh, <laughs> I love a meatloaf but sandwich. You can't but I've never heard of a spaghetti sandwich. But you can't. Re- you got to remember that the spaghetti sandwich also had the salad in it that went before the spaghetti. See, so, yeah, so it had the saying. lettuce in there, not the just carrots, lettuce, the carrots, carrots all everything else, salad dressing. <laughs> salad dressing. Yeah, right but my dad was like, "We're not wasting this shit." The biggest joy of my life was getting the morning weights in the morning, knowing that Wade Platts had to sit there after we lifted and watch me take out three of those spaghetti sandwiches and he'd be salivating at the mouth mike dylan did too they would always come at lunch and hey can i can i trade you i'll give you ten dollars you can go get hot lunch i'll take your everybody trade it all the time dude you'd get the best offers in the world for what dad would put in our lunch maybe there's a market for a leftover cookbook Ooh, wonder if there's got to be one out there huh not from the (coughs) provider dude we can we call it the macgyver you think the macgyver provider the macgyver provide provide how do you prefer, how do you MacGyver what would provider. be the uh, the Ben Affleck or no what is it you, was you it Brad would, you Pitt, would call it the Aniston? provider MacGyver edition the provider MacGyver no but you got to do one word like the oh well, you're marrying together like Brad Jelena yeah Brad Jelena why'd you go there wow I don't know that's weird <laughs> that you went straight to that one uh, per provider Pro- and MacGyver Progiver Progiver the Progiver Progiver Tom. Sounds right. Look at you get Tom's off, lost you get in his off. own this cookbook is an, right now. now you here, guys here's can't a picture I didn't is. understand. Well, this picture does this throw people off? You guys, what page is that, Tom? What's the nearest page that's marked? It's 107 here. 108, 109, 110. We did. Did you see us do this the other night? Were you here? Uh, yeah, I was here for this. Yeah. Jim Ray made this the other night. And we did it all on social. This is an unbelievable recipe. But this photo here, Chuck or Joey? Does it? Makes sense to have the actual dead bird next to the finished plate. This is cool to me because people are like, what's a chucker? You're eat- this is this. Yeah. That's what's cool about wild game. If you look at wild game, if Antis would look at wild game, like this picture of 110 in the provider cookbook, that's why we hunt. That bird is deceased ethically, and he's serving a bounty or she's serving a bounty Gave up their life for that. They lived a great life in the Rim Rocks of Nevada, Idaho, Oregon, Southern Oregon, wherever it is. They're hard to kill. You got to have a great dog. You got to be in pretty good shape. You got to be dumb too to chase them. Let's not <laughs> let's not get past that fact. But look at that. That that shows me. I don't know if you were thinking that, but that shows me what the provider is all about. These chucker aren't just birds. They are food, right? That's like raising a chicken, but it's a wild partridge. I saw yesterday uh, Uncle Ted. You, you have to do a harvest to make room for the new game coming in because there is no more habitat. No more so if you don't harvest some of these chucker, the new chicks coming up, they don't have a place to live. I mean, you know, that's a, that's a different context, but that's the principle of it, right? And he says, if you don't want to take place in the harvest, I understand that. I, you know, you don't have to go butcher your own cows or, you know, any of that. But we like to take part in the harvest, and we're protecting, you know, the ecosystem yeah. and Mother Earth, yeah. and that's what that is, right? If you don't kill a couple chucker, the 15 chicks that are coming up behind them, they've got nowhere to go, right? So they There's perish. only so much water they can drink. Only so much feed. And with the, with the amount of wild horses, it's a whole new argument that's coming up again with the amount that are, that are crushing the springs. It's harder and harder because that's why Endow— and MBU and Uncle Mel and, and Sweat Equity and all of that kind of work that goes into the Guzzler program is so key for sheep and, and chucker. And hunters are the ones doing it. Yeah, we're taking a few out, but you have to to make room. Could you imagine if you never killed a coyote in predator management? There's you a would, piece in this book about predator management. I ran across it. And the biggest thing is, is that if you want 
if you care about coyotes, you want to see them get mange and develop disease where it runs rampant and kills every one of them at once, then let's not have predator management. All right. You have to. You have to. Ted Nugent was on the podcast yesterday. He says an anti doesn't want to kill a deer until it goes through Aunt Edna's window right. when she's driving down Highway 90, right? Well, there, there's got to be management because you got to keep them in check. It's period. That's how it is. So, Have you ever heard his? his he does a little uh, video about vegans and how if you want to if you want to do some serious killing be a vegan because you know i might kill one deer off of my bean plot the guy that wants the bean plot kills all the mice all the voles all the birds all the you know any animal that comes in there Worms, they kill them. them all and what they can't kill then they put the pesticides the monosato on them and that kills everything he says so yeah if you want to kill a lot of stuff be a vegan and it's he it's said crazy to Rogan, wrap your mind around he that. He said but, that on the Rogan podcast. Yeah. That was killer when he's, I mean, I, that, it makes sense. Tom, good job on the book. We're going to, you know, Uncle Ted, we're talking to him, and this might come into fruition. I don't know if I've told you guys this. I've been texting with him today. But he has a TV show on the Outdoor Channel called The Spirit of the Wild. And I'm really close to teaming up with Ted and his management team of having a provider section on the episodes of us actually supplying him with a videotaped, do they still videotape? Is that still a word? Yeah, they do the reel to reel. Have you ever seen it? It's probably like eight millimeter. Have you ever seen Fight Club? Yeah, videoing, videoing, us doing the segments, you know, like filming it here, doing a provider segment of a wild game recipe, and then giving it to them to run within the context of the spirit of the wild show. Hey, this is Uncle Ted. Check out Chad and Clay and Tom, da 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 da, as they, as they cook this Axis deer that we just killed in Texas. Hmm. That'd be pretty freaking cool. Yeah, really cool. He played two songs yesterday. Let's give Uncle Ted a shout out right now. His new song, he's texted to me this morning, Come and Take It, is available as of this coming Monday, which will be, I don't know the date. What's today? The 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, the 15th? 15th of November, Come and Take It. Ted Nugent texted it to me today. Just hear this guitar riff, Tom. This is so 80s rock, dude. I oh, love yeah. it. It's Uncle Ted to do it. Listen to this guitar riff coming in. Wow. That is so sick, dude. It brings me back to the right day. He shreds. What's he referring to taking? His guns. Does it say let's go Brandon in the uh, chorus? <laughs> Tom, thank you for the hard work. Clay, thank you. The Provider Cookbook. This is our official publication launch day, November 9th, 2021. Check out theproviderlife.com. Check out barnesandnoble.com, amazon.com. There's retailers all over the country and online carrying it. We're so proud of it. We can't wait for you to get your phalanges on it. Think outside the box. Be unorthodox. Be the best version of the provider that you can be. Even you are cooking more and more on a Traeger now. I am. You know what I'd like to see, and I, I think it's going to come to fruition, is to tag us in the photos you try out of the uh, recipes, don't That's you think? That's what we're doing. If you take a – oh, did I just say something I shouldn't have? No, it's perfect. Oh. I love it. Yeah, I, I just was thinking, like, I watched you guys make this chuck or jelly, and, and it was, you know, there was some intimidation factor there. I don't know how he lights that pan on fire and all that, but – it would be cool to try that recipe. <laughs> Did you mean to that. No. intro that me? No, uh, I just got a message about it. I'll tell about tell you about it in a minute. But it'd be cool to make that recipe and then put that up on uh, the gram. Tag the provider in it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like everybody that buys the cookbook and gets it out of it, tag us in your videos, your pictures of you cooking with it. I, we're not the only providers in the world. There's millions of us. But there's a lot of people out there that don't know what it means to go out and kill a cow or a pig or a lamb or a chicken or go hunting or fishing and then, and then do the butchering and do the processing. Today, in my kitchen, we ate nonstop wild game. Jen warmed up burritos that we froze over 30 days ago of all snow goose meat that's in these burritos. At the same time, I had a slow-cooked chucker leg recipe going on in another cast iron. At the same time, I have an, enti an entire layout of 
in the sink right now of wild game being thawed out that we're going to cook throughout these next three or four days before we hit the road. And then the stuff that we we're going to, we're going to put it in Ziploc bags and carry it in the gator coolers in the trailer on our road trip across the country while we're hunting. Do you do this at like the beginning of each new season and just go through and cook what you got left from the year and not uh, all of it. I mean, I'm, cons- uh, you know how much wild game no, we need I, out here, but yeah, like right now I'm going, you want to make a little room, make I'm making some room, but I'm also making, uh, making snacks for the road. Feel, m- meal prep. Yeah. yeah. Meal prep wild style. Mm-hmm. Whoa. Ooh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Provider. Oh, uh, that's cook, copyrighted. Ma- meal prep wild si- style. <laughs> be on the wild side, be on the lookout for the wild style, wild side, meal prep, wild style. I think we've had three legitimate trademarkable things on this podcast, so they're all already in the works. Don't Here's try the last it. question I'm going to ask you, Crosby. Are you going to sell any of these books? You're a salesman. You sell, you sell a ketchup popsicle to a woman in white gloves. These are going to sell themselves. <laughs> the, so, the, so you and your father-in-law aren't going to buy 100 of them and give out the restaurant? I think they should go right into the uh, retail source here. They'll be gone before you even know it. What I retail mention, stores? Here? I don't want to mention the names, just in case. But are you going to get them in some retail stores here? Yeah, they're going into retail all over the place. I'm not. I, kidding I know you. they are. That's. I don't think you need any help selling them. Are I you think serious? you're going to need help getting more printed. Where do they come from? There, that was the book I had about reproduction when I was a kid. Where did I come from? It was the first porno book my mom and dad ever gave me. I guess it would be called a nudie magazine. <laughs> they gave you more than one porno book. <laughs> well, it was like one of those. It's it's like a weird deal. It was like naked people in a cartoon style book. Look it up. Where did I come from? I don't. I, yeah. It was weird looking people, like Family Guy stuff. I would, I wonder if that book's online. Then Google is worth every bit of money they're worth. Where you know it's going to be. Did I come from? Children's book. It comes right up. Look at it. It's still got the same font. It's still available. Nine ninety nine. Oh my goodness! Look at it. I told you. Look at the people that are in it. It looks like that Family Guy cartoon, and they're naked all through it, and they talk about everything in it. Look at. <clears throat> I'm going to images. Look at. There's images right there. There they are making love with their hearts coming up. The cartoon characters. Oh there, my god! There's little cartoon butt cheeks. There's two. Yes, I'm telling you. Where did I come from? I had that book when I was like my mom and dad raised me right, boy. You didn't have it. I think I did. You what is this book, The Night Dad Went to Jail? Oh, wow. What are we doing here? Let's not bring that up. That's awesome. Let's not bring that up. If you had that book when you were a kid, did do you feel like it helped shape any part of your life? I mean, was it worth having? Should I order yes, one now 100%. and read it? I might have to get one of those. 100%. Did you already... Uh, Tell me where who 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 produced or who published this book? Ben Bell of Dallas, Texas. They're so proud to be a part of it. Are they a cookbook Lindsay company? Lindsay and Claire, general? and I, I I don't want to forget any of them. There have been there there the whole team at Ben Bella, Glenn the owner, Richard, Mark, our agents. The entire process, man. You know, when we went on to, we, we sold this to nine companies. We sold the idea to nine publishing companies and had, you know, feedback, people interested. But these guys were like, we love this idea. And they put together a proposal, and, and Mendez and I and the team loved it. And it's here. Like, I thought this, this year would go by slow. I remember last December driving down the highway i was on i-5 north coming i cut across i-5 from the bay area going back to the butte sink to hunt ducks and film for the foul life and i was thinking about wow this book's going to take forever why do they want to push it out and it flew by so freaking fast it was unbelievable and now here we are november 9th 2021 thank you ben bella books Thank you to everybody that's been involved. Theproviderlife.com. Get our dry rubs. Get the brand new cookbook. We're so proud of it. We forgot to mention Bubba Henderson. He's in here. He helped out a lot in this book. Bubba helps out with a ton of stuff. Look at this. Wild Game Stroganoff. I have Jim Ray cooks this and Brad Forsyth. Both of their names are in the recipe because both of their recipes were so similar that we gave them both credit. I've been eating Stroganoff for years, dude. And now we have a we have validation of why we do it. This one right here, you, we, me and Brad, Brad and I made it, made it, have made it with duck, goose, and moose. Duck, goose, moose, and we. Uh, but Jim Ray does it with tons of different proteins. Did an interview today 
was yesterday I was on a podcast called All You Can Eat with a, a Russian Italian out of New York City. He's never been hunting a day in his life. Crosby ought to hear the stuff this guy's saying. I got the emails. I'll show you the, what he said after the interview. His mind was blown. He's just like. It's called All You Can Eat? Yeah, the podcast. It'll be out Monday, November 15th, Monday, November 15th, 2021. All You Can Eat podcast. Get on and listen to it. Then today I got interviewed by a guy named Joe out of Muscle and Fitness Magazine. They're doing a three-part series on us, my, myself, mainly about recipes and nutrition and workout program and trying to stay as fit as you can while living on the road and living this lifestyle and partying once in a while and partaking once in a while and cooking once in a while and eating too much once in a while. So we're going over all this tailgate training and all of these exercises we do on the road. We're going and, – and he started talking about how do you cook the perfect steak? How do you per- – cook the perfect chunk of meat how do you do duck so it's going to be a whole three-part series in muscle and fitness muscle and fitness.com on the provider and everything that's gone in. it goes into this mentality and this ideology of living off the land isn't that a that's a big trend in the fitness world right is the all the lean game meat i 100%. mean they're those More guys than are, ever they're going away from the chicken and turkey and all that and going for i just saw something the other day that like a good cut of lean red meat is better for you than chicken now there's a there's a guy i looked at the other day he eats all this liver and all sorts of weird like not weird but you know bone marrow and stuff he's just a that that world that's a whole different world you could have another cookbook just for those people i am not one of those people you will be though you're gonna have to start working out before you know it as you start having kids and marriage and all this that those things aren't coming my way oh yeah they are no Hundred percent. I'm out of my prime. So you're not going to try to sell these cookbooks. They're just going to sit here. No, I am. I well, I don't believe you need my help. But if it happens to a place where maybe they haven't heard of this, I'll I'll make sure it gets in there. Such as today. Well, today I'm tied up here, but maybe tomorrow. Are you guys podcasting for where the pavement ends today? We are. Where does the pavement end? I'll tell you where it ends, buddy. Right here at the provider. Right here. Run your truck right into this cookbook. Get in it. You're going to become engulfed. We're getting out of here. The Foul Life Podcast, The Provider Cookbook. Get it right now at theproviderlife.com. Thank you, Ben Bell. You can also get it at Amazon. You can get it at Barnes & Noble, other retailers across the country. It's going to start showing up more and more. We're just getting started. Thank you all so much for your support of The Provider. Thank you, Chad Mendez, Clint Belding, Clay Belding, Bubba, Alex, Mama Belding. Thank you to my dad. Uncle Bell, Aunt Diane, Christy, Mandy, Jennifer Swenson, Tom Rashishin, Christy Rashishin, all of our kids, Alyssa and Chase, Eva and Maggie. There's so many, too many to name. There's Axel. That's in Alberta. Look at those mallard ducks. We're in it on this picture right here. This vision, this sight. It's hunting season, y'all. Get out there. Be unapologetic, hunt with ethics, hunt with morals, have compassion for the animals we pursue, respect for the resource. Support your local butcher shop and thank you for being the best provider that you can. And thank you for supporting the provider. And don't forget brand new episodes of the Fowl Life TV, Benelli's The Fowl Life, airing right now exclusively on the Outdoor Channel. Right now, brand new California Waterfowl Association episodes. You're going to see some sad stuff, fun stuff, high times, low times, fun times, sad times. Seven new episodes start November. 15th 2021 and run through christmas we hope you enjoy them have a happy and safe hunting season for alex crosby i'm chad belding tom jake hit that button this is 2am logic my foul life <laughs>